We're living in a cage with invisible walls The wicked sight, guys of life making grown men crawl On their knees begging please save us from the boogeyman Funded by the CIA funneled through Arabian banks Like a shank to the neck They hit you from the back, no sweat Ho check and watch us shake And take away your freedom, you really don't need them When you're tucked away safe and protected by FEMA Then you must be a dreamer like the great pretender Ask the second amendment why I'll never surrender But I'll never plead the fifth when it comes to September I'ma yell it from the roof and expose the agenda yeah. Time to wake up and open your eyes to the matrix This is going out to the truth as a patriot Living free and dying hard, speaking through battle scars I'm gonna try to go through this real fast without losing my fucking shit I'm gonna forget that nobody told me about this And I just found out about it ten days later But anyways On this on ZeroHedge.com Iran seizes two U.S. Navy boats, crewmen for illegally entering Iranian waters. Now, as I've gone through the story, this is what happened. The United States intentionally crossed into Iranian waters with two PT boats that are equipped with nuclear weapons. The Iranians came out unarmed, on a boat, told them, you know you are in Iranian waters. The response was yes. Next, the fucking American in charge. And a couple of, a couple of the Americans throw down their weapons, put up their hands, and say, we surrender. As I look a little more, it's starting to sound like something real familiar. So I go and look it up. I remember Alex Jones talking about it. I even have it in some videos. Listen close. And now the Gulf of Tonkin incident. In the summer of 1964. By the way, this is all documented. And just this year, I think, or the year before, the government, the government, the government admitted that it was a false flag attack. So don't give me that stupid bullshit. Or President Lyndon Baines Johnson needed a pretext to commit the American people to the already expanding covert war in Southeast Asia. Three communist PT boats attacked an American destroyer off the coast of Vietnam yesterday, and today President Johnson's response was hard and tough. To any armed attack upon our forces, we shall reply. To any in Southeast Asia who ask our help in defending their freedom, we shall give it. In November of 2001, the LBJ Presidential Library and Museum released tapes of phone conversations with the President and then Defense Secretary Robert McNamara, where they openly discussed plans to use the state's Gulf of Tonkin incident as a pretext to expand the war. Then, in late 2005, the National Security Agency declassified its own official history of the Gulf of Tonkin and admitted that intelligence agency officers had deliberately skewed the intelligence and claimed that Vietnamese patrol boats had attacked U.S. destroyers on August 4, 1964. Sounds a little familiar, don't it, folks? Let's continue. When in reality, they had done nothing, even while being fired on. And see, the Iranians were smart enough to go out there without weapons. Another thing was, somebody caught it on fucking camera. On by U.S. forces. Congress then authorized the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. The Tonkin lie paved the way for 58,000 American deaths and over a million and a half dead Vietnamese. 
on October 6, 1976, two time bombs made of C-4 planted on a Douglas DC-8 aircraft exploded, killing all 73 people on board in the most deadly act of airline terrorism in the Western Hemisphere until September 11, 2001. The plane was carrying Olympic athletes from three countries, including gold medal winners from Cuba. Declassified FBI and CIA documents show that the convicted bombers of the flight have been given U.S. visas just days before the attack. That's how you do it. Get a bunch of fucking countries involved. They were in the employ of the U.S. government. This had been reported on respected publications for years, but has now been confirmed by multiple declassifications. Cuban plane bomber was CIA agent. Declassified U.S. government documents show. You've got to listen to the story of this. Because this is exactly what just fucking happened, and they, they almost fucking got away with it again. In the early days of the war with the Soviet Union, in Operation Northwood, they planned to hijack jets by remote control, crash them, and blame the attack on Cuba. There were many other terrorist attacks they planned to carry out that were contained within the document. One scenario mentioned was the destruction of a U.S. naval vessel that was to be blamed on a foreign power as a pretext for war with any enemy they picked. President Lyndon Baines Johnson went operational with Northwoods on June 8, 1967 during the Six-Day War. During the Six-Day War between Israel and the Arab nations, the USS Liberty was sent by Johnson to collect electronic intelligence in the eastern Mediterranean. The clearly marked U.S. intelligence ship was 14 miles off the coast of Israel in international waters. A short time after the air attack had been completed, the three torpedo boats approached us from our starboard quarter at high speed and in an apparent torpedo launch attitude. Israeli surveillance aircraft flew low over the ship and clearly identified it as an American vessel. At 2 p.m. that afternoon, the USS Liberty was attacked by three Mirage 3 fighter bombers. Three Mirage 3666. The onset of the attack, the fighter bombers were jamming U.S. signals. Not only were they jamming U.S. signals specifically, they were also unmarked, the only unmarked aircraft in Israel's arsenal. The fighter bombers strafed the ships with their cannons dropped conventional munitions and napalm on the ship, repeatedly from stem to stern. After the Mirages had done their work, the ship was hit by medium bomber Dassault Misseries, carrying napalm and other munitions like white phosphorus. The USS Liberty was then attacked by three Israeli torpedo boats bearing Israeli flags. The torpedo gunboats opened fire with high caliber machine guns and launched torpedoes. A single torpedo struck the ship blowing a hole in both sides, entering the ship and leaving a 30-foot exit hole when it exploded. You know what else left the 30-foot exit hole? The USS Cole happened the same way. Then the torpedo boats began strafing life rafts in the water on international war ground. While all of this was happening, the old flag for everyone. flag flew clearly above the ship. The attack on the Liberty went on for hour after hour after hour. During the entire attack, the USS Liberty continually called the Sixth Fleet that was nearby, begging for air support or rescue. Two aircraft carriers in the Med responded by launching fighter aircraft. Unbelievably, they were recalled by the White House. Rear Admiral Geist, then commanding the carriers in the Sixth Fleet, called Washington personally to confirm the recall order. Secretary of Defense McNamara came on the line, and then President Johnson himself told Geist, I want that goddamn ship going to the bottom. No help. Recall the wings. Imagine being Admiral Geis begging the president to allow you to defend an American ship that's under attack and being told by him that he wants the ship going to the bottom. Despite the fact that the U.S. carriers withdrew their help, a Russian spy ship appeared and witnessed part of the attack. After three hours into the attack, the Israelis withdrew because there were witnesses, allowing the damaged USS Liberty to limp to safety. Forty years after the attack on the USS Liberty, we know exactly what happened. I've interviewed former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Thomas Moore. I've interviewed the admirals that were on the line who heard what President Johnson said. I've even talked to the head JAG officer of the Navy who was ordered to falsify the reports and cover up what had really happened. 
One of the Israeli pilots has gone public as well, saying that three times he refused over his radio to headquarters to attack the ship, saying clearly that it was an American ship in international waters and an ally. He was ordered under threat of court-martial to engage the ship. We had 10 U.S. sailors cross into Iranian waters, and they were detained. Let me show you some pictures. Uh, they were in two boats. Uh, the Iranian Navy went... First of all, look at some of these fucking guys. Look at some of these Navy sailors. They're all... They're fucking out of shape. Some of them are, are what they would consider in the military fat. And, and found them, and then... Just uh, me, they though. came in and boarded the ship, so there's uh, U.S. soldiers on their knees with their hands uh, on top of their heads. That's an uncomfortable picture to look at. Those are fucking PT boats. Why did they have nuclear capabilities on them? Folks, I already told you where this is going. They're going to set up a fucking nuke in this country. More than one. But they're going to set up a nuke in this country and blame it on Iran. You mark my fucking words. And nobody fucking says anything about it. Three of them. Three. To the fucking T. The same fucking plan the USS call. Uh, Gulf of Tonkin, and now this shit. Apparently, there were if people there to catch it. Uh, we're supposed to be number one, so uh, our soldiers should never ever be detained. Those were the boats. Then obviously they turned in their weapons. Uh, and happened before, uh, in 2007, when British no, soldiers no, no. were uh, similar. It's oh. actually super obvious. But first, let's go to Joe Biden. Now, before uh, you get worried, they're already back. The Iranians yeah. took them, they were kept already overnight home. for whatever reason, and then immediately handed back to us. There is no actual issue. There's no controversy. In fact, as I'm going to have a nice that, trip, guys. This is actually a great sign of diplomacy working. It's actually super obvious. But first, let's go to Joe Biden. Uh, like, you know, ordinary nations. You fucking devil, man. Get off my in, screen. In 2007, when British soldiers were uh, similarly captured, they were kept for weeks. Did we apologize? Looking for any apartment. I believe so. <laughs> so, does somebody do that job penetrating no, into Europe? These fucking guys. Who in their right mind is a prisoner of war? And look at this is one of the fucking leaders of the team. Laughing okay, it up. Now, uh, that is largely true. Now you're going to see a video of the sailors that was shown on Iranian TV, which conservatives are going to go bananas over, but let's watch. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. Throwing up your gun, or throwing down your gun, saying, eh, we surrender. That's a mistake. Whoopsie daisy. Whoops. Fucking piece of shit. I want you to fucking look, and look real fucking good, okay? And get it through your thick skull. These are all the fucking people that he's had fired. Now you look at them fucking guys. They're ready to take his fucking head off. Look at all the fucking people he's fired. That's, that's just a partial listing of military brass. Okay. All, all, you know, majors, generals, five-star generals, commanders. Many of them in charge of nuclear weapons. And then he put his fucking schmucks in there. Look at all the fucking commanders. Okay? Look at them all. Look at them all. Oh, 
that's it. That's it. I'm going to come back very cordial with some ancient whatever. <laughs>